Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. We just may have seen the um, the knockout of the year. Um, I'm talking, of course, about um, Ellis Zorro knocking flat Jose Burton in uh, I think it was the seventh round. Um, amazing knockout um, and a good fight. A very, very good fight. Now, Ellis Zorro... Uh, and Burton fought for something called the WBO European Cruiserweight title. I don't know what that is. It gets you a ranking again. But to me, there's only one European title, and that's the, w the, uh, the EBU title. That's the established traditional European belt. This is something that gets you a ranking with the WBO. And the man who now has the ranking with the WBO is the 16-0 Ellis Zorro. Uh, 16 wins, like I say, 7 KOs. No defeats, no draws. 30 years of age, orthodox fighter. Apparently had no interest in boxing until he was about 21. So it shows you what you can do if you dedicate yourself. Um, and he was in against Hosea Burton, six foot four. I mean, he must be, Burton must have been five or six inches taller than, than Zorro. Um, former light heavyweight, British light heavyweight champ. Uh, recently moved up to cruiser. I think Burton, looking at him, is sort of between weights because he's, He's six foot four. I mean, making light heavy is going to be difficult and clearly was difficult for him. Um, especially at 34, is, you know, getting down to light heavy would be too much. But at the same time, he didn't, even though he's tall, he's quite narrow shouldered. He didn't look, doesn't look to me like he's got the physique to be a cruiserweight, especially when you consider how big some of these modern cruisers are, like a Coley and React Paul, and they're huge men. Um, so if there was, say, a junior cruiserweight, division i'm not saying there should be but if there was burton would suit it well he had a slight they were so slightly soft around the middle but he boxed very very well for huge portions of this fight and uh in the first round um yeah burton was very proactive jabbing an awful lot clearly this was going to be a fight between the tall long-limbed guy the praying mantis jabbing a lot firing the right crosses when he needed to Maybe throwing a few a bit of body work, but keeping the much shorter man on the end of that jab. Zorro, he had to get in close, bob and weave his way in, faint his way in, perhaps. Again, the old adage jab with the jabber. Um, and first round, I thought, yeah, like I say, Burton looked proactive. Second round, he looked pretty good. He he actually bloodied Zorro's nose, but Zorro did land a few. Very, you know, surprisingly fast swinging individual punches. And Burton has always had a habit of standing upright and boxing upright. Um, and if you like that, if, if there's very little movement at the waist or if you're sort of relying on slipping punches by an inch, half an inch um, with, with head movement, but no real torso movement, you're playing a dangerous game, especially against a shorter guy who will explode over the top with punches they might only be individual punches and if if you can take away the taller guy's jab with you know timing and get in close and rough him up and put the not just the physical pressure but as we always say the mental pressure as well um put him back in his box it, suddenly you can find a taller fighter fighting small coming in well Burton didn't really do that. He, he he doesn't seem able to crouch at all. He doesn't seem able. His in fighting is is very poor. Um, but if he stands upright and sticks the jab out and fires everything off the jab in that textbook way, he does look quite impressive. And sure enough, like I say in the second round, he bloodied Ellis Soros' nose. In the third round, it's interesting because you know. Again, I mean, th th these rounds were, th they were quite competitive, the first three rounds. But it was Burton who ended up with the bloody nose. So they're both bleeding quite heavily from the nose. And weirdly, you know, Burton had the, the yellow old uh, yellow shorts on from the old champs camp, Phil Martin's um, uh, old uh, gym that Joe Gallagher cut his teeth in. This goes back to, I remember watching champs camp fighters in the late, late very late 80s, early 90s. Um, about 90, I was going to say 1990 I, I know I saw a few of them Paul Silky Jones I think was in Champs Camp and a few others what was that guy's name Wayne Ellis anyway I'm digressing going down memory lane um, but Burton's yellow Champs Camp shorts were covered in blood um, 
and Zorro, he had a lot of blood splashing all over him. I mean, it was this was a tough, tough fight. But Burton in the in the let's say fourth, maybe fifth or sixth, fourth, fifth, sixth, he did even though he was being clocked, even though there was danger there in by individual punches, he was generally speaking keeping Ellis Zorro on the end of the jab and controlling the range, which is absolute obviously it's pretty vital. It's a statement of the obvious. You control the range in a fight, you know, you you're halfway there to winning. You can you go about your business when you can control the range. But Zorro, rather tellingly, I mean, he was, around about the fifth round, he, he he had a very bad round, I think, in the fifth round, where he was starting to get beaten up a bit. But he noticeably, he didn't lose heart. He had, I think, Denzel Bentley, his mate, was in the audience at the York Hall, you know, cheering him on. And he had a lot of support in the crowd. Um, well, as did Burton, a lot of the travelling lads. Burton's from, I think he's from uh, Lancashire somewhere, I can't remember where. But a lot of the lads, the travellers, had come down to support him. But there's no doubt Burton was getting the better of Zorro in, I think, the fifth fifth or the sixth round. In the fifth round, I want to say, he was beating Zorro up quite badly. And you're beginning to think, if Burton can keep this up, he's got this fight. Well, it unravelled rather dramatically in the seventh round because Burton, again, standing very upright. Zorro comes in, lands a left hook, and suddenly... Burton is swaying at the waist, somewhat involuntarily. He's trying to get out of the way. Um, he's almost like a sort of, you know, reed in the wind, you know, the wind being coming from the fists of Zorro. The left hook landed. Then Zorro landed a big right hand. And Burton, again, no inside game at all, really. Lunges forward, wraps those long limbs around Zorro. Zorro's trying to shake him off. And Burton hits the floor. No knockdown. It was just a wrestling match. I agree with the ref. It was a wrestling match. Burton gets up. Again, blood on his face. There's some blood on Zorro. This is a tough, tough fight. Zorro gets Burton back onto the ropes. Burton is looking to throw his own right hand. The left hand gets lazy, leaves that huge gap. Over the top with the right comes Zorro. And it lands bang on the jaw and instantly Isaiah Burton collapses, this is by the ropes, collapses backwards, flat onto his back, a clean knockout, and Ellis Zorro picks up this WBO European cruiserweight title. But what a knockout. I mean, it was one, we talk about one punch. This was, Ellis Zorro needed that to find that punch because he, he was losing that fight. I mean, I had it, I can't remember what I had it, 4 2 or something. Um, but you, you can make, you can make a case for, <coughs> you know, um, it's just if it was a six rounder, Burton would have run, would have won it. This was actually a ten rounder, but Burton will be kicking himself because he'll think if I'd maintained that that discipline, if I'd managed to just keep the jab going, I could have won this fight, and he could have done. But all credit to Ellis Sorrow. I mean, he was behind, he was getting beaten up, um, but he found the punch that he needed, you know. And we've seen a lot of bloody noses. What with poor old John Ryder having his smashed to bits in the second round against Canelo, and these two guys took some. Took a good beating. At 34, should Burton retire? Like I say, I don't know. Uh, it depends what what offers he gets. If he wants to fight on, he, he, could, he should do. I think he's found his level. A lot of people were talking about him as being a world-level fighter. He never, ever was. Um, but he's not a bad fighter. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being domestic level. Um, but at Cruiserweight, he looks a little bit small not not in terms of height in terms of dimensions but in terms of physical strength um and prowess physical prowess if you like he doesn't look to me like a uh, really a cruiserweight but he's too big for light heavy i don't know should he go on at 34 maybe maybe not i don't know as for ellis sorrow at 30 he'll be looking for other challenges he's got that wbo european cruiserweight thing so maybe he'll go for uh Go for world level. I, I personally would not stick at European level for a while. He started late, so at 30, he's not exactly got a lot of miles on the clock. Um, but this was a good win. This was a good win and a very entertaining fight and a brilliant knockout. Go see the knockout. If you don't watch the, I mean, watch the fight. It's a great fight. Um, very good fight. But the knockout, whew, have a look at it. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> this was by, uh, this was by the way, a, a, B, a BT Frank Warren Queensbury promotion. Um, and it was a, what a bad little card for a Friday night at, at the old York Hall. So I was quite impressed. I enjoyed it anyway. Anyway, 
Did you see it? If so, leave your comments below. Thanks for your time as always. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new. It takes a second to hit that subscribe button and we want to build the channel up and the like button if you like the video as well. I'd appreciate that too. Uh, and of course, most of all, I appreciate your time taking the time out to watch these videos. I love making them and I love reading your comments, so leave them below. Anyway, enjoy your weekend. Until next time, bye for now.